In this video, we're going to talk about electrolysis. Before getting into electrolysis, let's review a few important principles about the interactions between protons and electrons. So protons have a property called charge, and they have a positive charge. We just call it that. Electrons have a property called negative charge. Now, in this video, I'm going to represent electrons uh, sometimes it's just E minus. If I'm drawing, let's say, carbon, um, and I put little dots around it, those are also going to be electrons. And then if I draw a line, that just means a bond. That means two. So this is just the same thing as two electrons. Now, electrons and electrons have a negative charge, a property called negative charge, and protons have a property called positive charge. This is going to cause them to be attracted to one another. So opposites attract. But if you have two protons next to one another, uh, those are going to feel a repulsion force. So the same charges are going to be repulsed. And then the same thing with uh, same negative charges. So keep that in mind as we get into this video. Now, in this situation, we have a beaker of water. And I have two electrodes, one on the right side and one on the left side. I'm going to connect them to a battery. Uh, the right side is going to be positively charged and the next left side is going to be negatively charged. Which would mean that the right electrode is the anode because it is the positively charged electrode and the left electrode is going to be the cathode. Now, as a result of having a positive charge here, electrons are going to flow from the anode and toward the positive charge because you're attracted to a positive charge since electrons have a negative charge. So electrons will flow this direction and then electrons are going to be repulsed by the negative charge here. So they're going to flow into the cathode. So as a result of electrons leaving this, this space right here, this anode, uh, this anode is going to develop a positive charge. So you're going to have more protons in here than electrons because the electrons have left. And the opposite will happen to the cathode because electrons are coming in. So you're going to have a negative charge within this electrode. The liquid in here is obviously going to be water, but we're also going to dissolve sodium hydroxide in it. So sodium hydroxide, the sodium or the Na has a positive charge, a positive one charge, and the hydroxide, which is the OH, has a negative one charge. Now the whole point of electrolysis, of water at least, is that let's that you have the reaction is basically this. You have two water molecules, and you want to turn them into hydrogen gas and oxygen. So you're separating, so you're taking the oxygen and hydrogens, and you're separating them so that you have oxygen and then hydrogen. Now, how does this actually happen? What's the mechanism that helps us do this? Toward the left side of our beaker, we're going to, as expected, have some water molecules floating around. And so I'm going to draw two water molecules. And a concept that you need to understand about water is that water is, is a polar molecule. And the reason it's a polar molecule is because of electronegativity. Oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5, and hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1. Electronegativity measures the strength at which the atom is going to pull electrons toward itself. So in, the, in these little dots, not these dots, but these, um, these lines, 
These represent two electrons. These are the two electrons that oxygen and hydrogen are sharing between one another. Since oxygen pulls the electrons closer to itself, these electrons are going to be a little closer to oxygen than hydrogen. So the way we denote that and what we call it is a partial charge. So since the electrons are a little bit closer to oxygen than the hydrogens, the oxygen is going to have a partial negative charge and the hydrogen, both of them are going to have partial positive charges. So that's, that's called partial charge right there. Now, as we talked about, opposite charges attract. And as you can see here, the hydrogens are going to be turned toward the cathode, which has negative charges. What can happen within the cathode is that one of the electrons in the cathode can actually exit the cathode because it's attracted to the uh, slightly positively charged hydrogens. And then it can pull the hydrogen away from the water molecule and basically steal a hydrogen from water. So if that were to happen, you would have hydrogen being taken away. And it still has a partial positive charge, so I'll, I'll leave that. But hydrogen will be taken, taken away, and then it will look like a hydrogen molecule, or, well, a hydrogen atom with one electron. And then, as we said, this, this um, bond right here is just two electrons. So that turns into another lone pair on the oxygen. The same thing can happen on the other oxygen. An electron can come in and steal the hydrogen away. And so the other hydrogen is just going to come over here. And this is the electron that stole it. And then this bond right here can become a lone pair. Now what you can see happens is that we have two hydrogen atoms next to one another. Hydrogen is a diatomic atom in the sense that it doesn't like to exist as just H, it likes to exist as H2. So these two hydrogen atoms are going to bond. So they're going to share, they each have one electron, they're going to share those electrons, and those, those electrons are going to form the bond between them. So it will look like that. <clears throat> now you might ask yourself, what is this thing? This is literally a water molecule with the hydrogen taken away. This is actually what we talked about earlier, which is the hydroxide. Because hydrogen has one proton, we've taken, all we've done is taken away one positive charge away from water, and we have basically ha turned it into a ion. So we have now introduced a negative one charge to the water. So now it is a hydroxide with a negative one charge. So these are called hydroxides. Now what we originally started with was some water. We had two water molecules. We also had two electrons coming in out of the cathode. And that yielded us, we can see here, we have two hydroxides and we have hydrogen gas. So I'm going to write that reaction on the bottom here. And we'll come back to it and show how we can basically add this reaction to another reaction, and then we will see the end product. Now, when this happens, you're going to have some hydroxide um, ions floating around in your water. So I'm gonna just delete these hydrogen ions, and I'll or sorry, um, hydroxide ions, and then I will just draw them on the right side. They basically look something like this, same as before. In this case, I'm going to draw um, four of them. Now, once again, keeping in mind the fact that Hydroxide has a negative one charge. 
and the anode here is very positively charged. We have all these positive charges. And we have a few electrons that can actually, that the anode can steal from the hydroxide. So it can steal these electrons, it can steal these electrons, these lone pairs, but usually it is going to steal the electrons in the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So what is actually going to happen is that all these positive charges here are going to cause these electrons to come into the, into the anode. And so since each of those bonds is two electrons, we're going to lose a total of four electrons. So if I delete this right here, um, you're going to see two electrons in the anode, and now the hydrogen is just one hydrogen proton without any electrons floating around. So then these positive hydrogen ions are going to be repulsed by the positive charge of the anode since they both have positive charges. So they're, this is just going to move to the left. So let me just denote that. So it's going to move to the left. And then it's going to find some other hydroxide that were created as a result of this reaction on the bottom. These other hydroxides have a negative one charge, the hydrogen has a positive one charge, so they're going to attract. And what the hydrogen can do is actually use one of the lone pairs on the, on the oxygen to bond to the oxygen and create a water molecule. So these two electrons, I did it wrong, sorry. So for example, these two electrons can turn into a bond. And so now you have a water molecule right here. This is a water molecule. And we can do the same thing with this one. And now we have two water molecules. And again, similar to the way that hydrogen was, where it wants to exist as H2 and not H, uh, oxygen does the same thing. So we have two oxygen atoms. Oxygen doesn't want to exist as it's just oxygen, it wants to exist as O2. And so these two are going to bond together and they're going to form this sort of structure. So what we originally started out with were four hydroxides and what we ended up with here, we have two water molecules. So I'm going to write 2H2O. We have two oxygens and we also have now four electrons that are coming out of it. So that's how these two reactions occur. Now, what happens if we combine these reactions? In math, you've probably combined polynomials before, and it's kind of similar in a sense. It's not the exact same thing, but it's kind of similar. This bottom reaction here, I'm gonna multiply uh, all the coefficients by two. So instead of having two water molecules, I'm gonna have four. And then we're going to double everything else. So four electrons. Okay, made a mistake there. This should be four. And then this one is going to be four hydroxides yielding two water molecules, an oxygen, and four electrons. If we add these reactions, uh, what we can do is cancel things out that are on opposite sides. So this right side is going to be the products, and left side is going to be reactants. The stuff that's on the products of this reaction can be canceled out with the reactants of this side. So, and in the opposite of those, these can be canceled out with these. 
So the first thing that I can see we can cancel out is the hydroxides. So these two can cancel out. The reason is because you can theoretically have a situation where this reaction happens first, and then the products of this are used in this. So we can cancel those out. And then we also have electrons that we can cancel, four electrons on each. And you can see here we have water molecules, right? But we have four on the top, we have two on the bottom. So we can get rid of the two here. And then since that would be subtracting both, both uh, reactions by two water molecules, we're going to end up with two here. So I'm just going to rewrite that as two. So now if I write everything that is not crossed out, we have two water molecules on the reactant side, <coughs> which is going to yield oxygen and some hydrogen. So that's the reaction that we talked about at the beginning of the video. And this is the mechanism by which it can all happen. Another thing to keep in mind as well is the difference between reduction and oxidation. The reaction we had up that happened on the cathode, which was this reaction on the bottom left, this is called reduction. Every time you introduce electrons in on the reactant side, that's going to be a, a reduction. So this was called reduction and then on the right side we had what's called oxidation oxidation is basically the opposite because the electrons were on the product side the way you can think about this is um, in terms of oxidation states so if i have for example a carbon and as we can see here reduction basically adds electrons into uh, whatever you have and then oxidation takes away electrons from whatever you have. Because on the anode, the electrons were taken away into the anode, and the cathode, we had electrons introduced in. When you have reduction, um, okay, sorry, let's back up here. If I give the carbon electrons, I'm going to basically make it, let's say I give it one extra electron, and I make it negatively charged. I have now decreased its oxidation state. The oxidation state is the number right here. The oxidation state before was zero, it was nothing. But now I've decreased it. In other words, I've reduced it by giving it electrons. However, if I take away an electron, so let's say I take away two electrons, right? It's now going to end up having a positive one charge. I could just draw that as red if we want. So I've increased its oxidation state, meaning that I've oxidized it. Oxidized, there we go. So that's the difference between those two types of reactions, probably gonna be very important in your chemistry class. And electrolysis has both of those in it, and these are the examples. So I hope this video was helpful, um, and thank you for watching.